participants. We will start the event at 10.05 as we will wait for other participants to arrive. Thank you. Hello and good day to everyone. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. Please mute your mic during the session to avoid any interruption. Questions will be open during the Q&A session later. And please do not turn on your mic directly, where in this case, we reserve the right to mute you. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's final year project sharing session. 
My name is Wan Saraya Binti Wan Muhammad Lotfi, and I'll be your host and moderator for today. We have invited amazing alumni for each department in our faculty. Each speaker has their own unique specialty for the FYP, so please make sure to sit tight and give your full attention as it may help you for your future FYP. Now let's start with the introduction of our brilliant speakers. From the software engineering department, we have Muhammad Rahiman bin Abdulman, or also known as Ray, with his FYP titled the Fitweed Arduino based smartwatch for early anticipatory anxiety notification system. Some interesting fact about Rahiman is that he is a former vice president of PECOM 2018-2019 and now is a software engineer at Dell. Can you believe that? Wow, that is truly amazing, Rahiman. Can you open your camera and say hi to the audience, Rahiman? All right, hi everyone. Nice to meet all of you. Uh, how are you? All right, thank you. <laughs> all right, thank you, Ray. So next, from the Information Systems Department, we have Safia Sahira Hassan with the e-calculator Your Zakat for her FYP title. Did you guys know that Safia has collaborated with Lembaga Zakat Selangor for her own e-zakat system? That surely must be really hard to get. And in case you guys are wondering, Safia is now working as a software tester analyst at Prudential Assurance Malaysia. How impressive is that? Safia, can you say hi to the audience? Hi, I'm Saf. <laughs> hi, Saf. All right, now next we have the Computer System and Networking Department. We have Chen Jia Liang with his FYP titled Real Time Stream Processing and Analysis Mass Detection on Live Video Stream. Jia Liang is currently not working. However, he is preparing for cybersecurity certificates from OSCP by Offensive Security and COP TIA SIG. Ji Yaliang is surely an excellent student back in UM as he had Dian's list for every semester. Now that my friend is surely not easy, especially when we had when he had to do exams and presentations fully physical. You are definitely inspirational, Ji Yaliang. Can you open your camera and wave to the audience? Um hello. Hello. All right, next for data. For Artificial Intelligence Department, we have Lei Han Cheng with the FIP titled Water Pollution Classification with Deep Learning. Interesting fact, Lei Hang is an ex-president of PECOM 2018-2019 with Rahiman as his vice. This could be a reunion for them. Well, Lei Hang is currently working as a technical analyst at ExxonMobil, which the job scopes include development and agile project management. Wow, incredible. For data science, with the FYP title Cryptocurrency Price Predictor, we have invited Raja Alfik Isrin bin Raja Ismail Muhammad. Raja has led project for his social engagement of IS department and was a Pemuda Syar Mahasiswa at College Kediaman Kinabalu University Malaya and he has also achieved Dean's List in his semester one in 2020 and 2021. Now, he is an intern in the Center of Applied Data Science under Client Engagement Department. How cool is that? Raja, can you open your camera for the audience? And don't forget to say hi. Hi, everyone. Hello. And lastly, we have Lian Lim Wei Wen with her FYP titled Augmented Reality Wall Decor App. Lian Wu has achieved a lot during her days as a student in UM, especially in hackathons. And some of them is being the first runner up in NEM Blockchain Hackathon 2018, second runner up in GDEC Hackathon 2018, and won the consolation prize for the eHealth Hackathon in 2018. With her astonishing achievements, Lian is now a Java developer. Lian Lim, Lien, do you can you open your camera and say hi to the audience? Um, hi guys. Uh, I think I have a bit technical with my <laughs> camera, hi. so yeah, no worries, you guys. Guys, still hear my voice? So yeah, yeah we can nice see you. All right, hi Lien. All right, and that is all for our speakers for today. Thank you to all alumni that have agreed to participate in with today's sharing session. It really means a lot to us. Before we start. I'd like to let the audience know that we have a Slido code that will be used for our Q&A session later. The Slido link and code is provided in the chat box, or you can just scan the QR code here shown in my backdrop. 
and you are. The code is also visible above the QR code here. You are allowed to provide questions in Slido along the sharing session, and just to remind you again, questions will be entertained during the Q&A session. Without further ado, let us now start our sharing session. I invite Rahiman or Ray to start today's sharing session with his demonstration of his FYP. Whenever you are ready, Rahiman. All right, thanks a lot, Soraya. Um, I'm going to share my screen now. Um, right. So I think you guys should be able to see my presentation, right? Can you, Soraya? Yep, I can see it. Okay. All right. So um, good uh, good morning, everyone. So my name is Rahiman, and uh, it's my pleasure to be here today. Uh, I'd like to thank Pukong for inviting me. Um, so since I only have five minutes of presentation time, so uh, I just like to warn all of you that I will not be able to go through a lot like, when it comes to my FYP for this particular presentation. But don't worry, the organizer will actually help share the full presentation slides to everyone here like, if you want to have more information about uh, my FYP. So from this first slide, you can see the full title of my project. I know it's quite lengthy, <laughs> uh, but I hope by the end of this presentation, you'll be able to uh, have some general idea about what my project is all about. And understand like, why the title is the way it is. So I'm doing this project together with my partner, Nufaiz Azira. She sends her regards, and we are both supervised by Associate Professor Dr. Siti Hafiza Abdul Hamid. So uh, right off the bat, our project consists of three modules slash components. From here alone, you can see that our project structure right, is not exactly like a typical software engineering FYP structure, which usually just centers upon the web application and you have a bunch of modules underneath. Uh, we also have that obviously, uh, but as you can see, we, we also have like two additional external components that we need to deal with. First is the emotion detection model or EDM. Second one is the Arduino smartwatch prototype. And last but not least, the web application, which is the main interface that users of our system will interact with. So moving on to the very, very high level system flow of how our system works. Again, there's a bunch of behind the scenes stuff and branches of decisions that I intentionally left out so that it's easier for you guys to understand uh, what our project is about. So, our, so first and foremost, obviously the user of our system, specifically what we call the smartwatch user, will first register an account in our web application. And in doing so, they need to link their Twitter account, which has to be set to public. Uh, and uh, uh, while they're registering, lah, okay, so it's for us to actually extract the tweets. Uh, at the same time, we will actually give this user a prototype of our Arduino smartwatch where they can pair it with their account during registration. After that, you can see that the flow kind of branch out right into two concurrent, albeit in different time context uh, flows. So first is that uh, is what we call the tweets analysis. So because we already have access to their Twitter account where they've already given us permission and consent, uh, we will only be able to extract it if they uh, give they give their consent. Lah. Okay, it's very important because we're dealing with their personal data here. So uh, we will actually extract their tweet their tweets uh, for by default for a period of seven days, although this period can be changed uh, in the system. And then the emotion detection model, which is the machine learning model that I train, will analyze those tweets and predict their emotions, right? And, and eventually they will come up with the overall tweets emotion of the user. In other words, how the user feels based on their Twitter post for a specific period of time. Okay, so that is the first information that we can obtain from the user. After that, we also have the vital science analysis. So this, this the Arduino smartwatch prototype is equipped with uh, sensors that can detect the heartbeat and temperature of the user. So from this, we can actually obtain analysis regarding the user's body condition uh, based on their patterns of their uh, temperature and heartbeat. So from these two information, right, we will actually come up with a notification uh, to notify the user regarding the anxiety state. What we managed to find out during our FRP1 literature review is that a lot of people, they are either completely unaware, not completely, lah, unaware of their mental health uh, state, or even worse, they knew that they might be uh, suffering from uh, certain mental health disorder, but they are in a state of denial, right? Possibly due to several factors like stigma that prevents them from actually meeting up a, a medical professional and seeking uh, help, right? So. It's important for me to mention in this presentation that our system is not intended to diagnose someone. Okay, there is a very, very important caveat. That decision still lies upon medical professionals. What we're trying to do is like we are notifying people to make sure that they are alert lah, regarding their mental state, uh, specifically anxiety, and hope that they can take proactive steps. The analogy here is like if you have a Fitbit or a smartwatch, right? Uh, like Apple Watch, for example, you might get notifications asking you to keep exercising to prevent you from living a sedentary lifestyle, right? So it's something similar, but for mental health. And to our surprise, no one has ever done something like this before. That was, that was a huge surprise for us uh, when we were doing our literature review in FRP1. No one has tried to combine 
the analysis of the user's uh, social media posts together with their vital signs analysis for the purpose of you know, checking uh, their mental health, uh, mental health state. So this is roughly how our system works. Uh, again, uh, for more in-depth view, you can take a look at our presentation slides later lah, when you have the link. So here are a list of modules that we have for our web application. I'm not going to go through all of them specifically. One tip I would like to give to everyone here is that when you're doing your, when you're presenting about your FRP right in your Viva later on, make sure to link your modules to your objective. It will really help the panels, especially doing FRP2, to prove to them that you actually achieved the objectives in the first place. The panels are very critical uh, regarding your objectives. So yeah, so this is one of the strategies that you can employ uh, to, to, to show to them that you completed your objectives successfully in FRP2. I've also included the technology stacks that we use for our entire project. I'll just briefly go through them. Again, you can look at them in detail when you have the slides later on. And last but not least for the project demonstration, right? Um, I'm not going to demonstrate live, obviously. I'm almost five minutes up. So uh, you can scan this QR code later to, uh, to, to see the YouTube video of my part of my FYP2 final presentation link. Lah. Uh, so there's just one small favor I'd like to ask everyone. Uh, it, you will you'll be able to see the link to the uh, the deployed web application. Lah. Uh, it's still live, but try, try not to register a new account in that system because I intentionally disable certain parts. Lah. In order to keep the site up and running, it costs uh, uh, a bit of money. So in order, uh, since the system is not really used by anyone at the moment, I decided to disable certain features lah, in order to cut down the cost. So just very briefly, uh, our project also got several achievements, which were really honestly unexpected. Lah. So among the achievements that we got include gold medal for this DinoX competition, several awards for the ITP Malaysia FYP competition, and most recently, my partner and I, together with our super supervisor, actually submitted a draft of our conference paper lah, for ICCSD 2022 in order to sort of establish a copyright of our work, lah, since it's, no one has ever done something like this before. The result of this conference paper, or whether it will be accepted, will be released on May 15. Lah. So I hope you guys can pray that the paper will be accepted. Yeah, it was a huge amount of work lah, for this. And yeah, that's pretty much it for me. So if you have any questions, you can ask during the event as well, or even after the event, you can contact me through the following platforms. Right. So thank you so much. Uh, back to the moderator. Wow. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Ray. I'm sure some of you are really motivated after hearing his presentation of his FYP. All right. Now, without wasting any time, Safia, the stage is passed to you. All right. I'll be sharing my screen first. You guys can see, right? Yep, we can see you. Slide. All right, so hi, my name is Safa Sahira, and my uh, FYP title was Ika Kereta Yazakait, which is um, under supervision of Dr. Nojihan. And it, my stakeholder was Lembaga Zakat Selangor, as mentioned by Soraya just now. And then my other stakeholder is actually Lembaga Hasil Dalam Negeri, but it was actually very um, small contribution since we only collaborated with them for our first uh, first semester of the FYP. So without further ado, um, I will explain a little bit about eZakat system. It is a web-based application that offers various features to enhance user zakat management. It uh, At first, it only includes the zakat calculator and also tax rebate prediction, which is just, just these two. But as you can see here, it gradually adds up to these a lot of features because um, when we have a lot of time in our hand, uh, we decided to add more of the features and these features are all just in my module. So um, next, I will move on to the, a little bit of demo. I, and I've shown it actually just a little bit of the uh, demo of this website because we don't have much time. But first, uh, this is uh, part of the website, which is Zakat Calculator. And it is, this is a very simple Zakat Calculator which um, the calculators is just uh, deducting the expenditure from profit as a calculator and then it will calculate the amount eligible for zakat and also zakat total and the second one is another type of zakat calculator we uh, as mentioned i we really have a lot of zakat calculators because uh, zakat we have zakat on business zakat on income and then zakat on you know, some livestock. So, so this is for Zakat for Business. And what me and my partner focuses on are uh, the user friendliness of our website. So um, as you can see here, we have the tab navigation through all the calculations so that the user that varies from, uh, you know, Zakat payers, they focuses on the uh, adults payers, um, either from the young adults to the older adults. So user friendliness are very important. And here um, you can see there are two buttons on the bottom of the page, which is for pay and the save the total. 
which pay now uh, are going to be redirected to PayPal. And save total is going to save the calculations records, you know, for easier for the Zakat payers to save and uh, view their Zakat calculations later on. So this is one of the other features, which is for consultation booking. Uh, this is the, uh, as you can see, there's a calendar and the user can choose any dates other than uh, week weekends and then they can also choose a slot and subject and messages for the Zakat officers to see and uh, they can view their status of application on their notification, which are not shown here. And after the consultation booking are sent to the admin site, here you can see there is um, a filtered uh, pending assigned and rejected status and some of the details on the tables. Once uh, the admin clicked on each one of the uh, details here, they, they click on edit, they will be redirected to another uh, model, which is a pop-up, which, which they can see the unassigned and assigned admin for the consultation details, where if uh, the consultation details are for the assigned admin, there will be none. And then for the assigned admin, they will show some profile pictures and also the uh, the, the most important one is the client's notes. Lah. And then they can also update uh, these uh, consultation details. So um, apart from the demos, I would also like to share to you guys some of the useful tips that might be useful for you and for managing your final year project. So the first one is you guys have to have good continuous communication, which uh, good communication with your, if you have one, your partner, your stakeholder, and also your supervisor, because um, your stakeholder and supervisor, they are the one who will be giving you the industrial or another idea for you guys. So just follow up and ask for advice for them, either for your partner, stakeholder or supervisor. And the second one is to hasten your kit start. It is very important to start early and to prepare for your develop, uh, developing the project. Because even for me, myself, um, for the prototype, we for me and my partner, we started the prototype uh, development before the monitoring session and also we sacrifices a little bit of our no actually we sacrifices a lot of our uh, semester break for the system itself and you know when you have a lot of more time that you can gradually add some features and also improve the system and the last one is to pluck up the courage you know don't hesitate to ask for external opinion you can either refer to your friends or seniors for insights because sometimes maybe um, your seniors or friends have already faced um, the same problem with uh, what you are facing right now. So maybe asking them will be uh, helping you a lot. And, um, you know, another one is just do your best. You know, I, yeah, at the end of the day, your efforts will be reflected on your final year project. So that is all from me. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Zakia. That was a great detailed presentation. Next, from the Computer System and Networking Department, Jialia, whenever you are ready. Um, hi, uh, I'm Jaya. So basically, um, my title is a uh, real-time stream processing and analysis, which basically means that how we deal with real-time data to process right on time and to gain useful information in a split of second. And mass detection on live video stream is the application I choose to do. So basically, is um. My system takes in any videos on YouTube, so uh, the tech stack that we'll use is uh, Apache Kafka, which uh, have a producer and consumer. So basically, data is being pulled to the push to the producer and then being pulled to the consumer as a stream of uh, real time data. Then it can get consumed and uh, doing um, face mask detection right on the time and display on the app itself. And what we will need to do is uh, gathering a lot of the uh, face mask data maybe uh, available on Kaggle or GitHub or anyways, then we, we are able to train our models. And as you can see in actually in FYP2, what I did is uh, this purple circles section this part is what i did in my fyp2 while this part is my fyp1 so um, my advice is uh, you have to uh, plan your time well so so that you can show a progression over time 
So what I did on FYP2 is keep on improving the accuracy of my mask detection model and changing framework. And those in the purple circles uh, section, which streamly is for UI and pandas is to show the database and this SQL is actually to uh, store up some making the database for future reference. And uh, this is it. Uh, we, this is a local web app that you can either insert your uh, YouTube link or you can choose a YouTube video. Um, then when you choose it and you click start and uh, it will be shown up over uh, and our web, uh, web page here. Basically, it will detect uh, whether people are wearing face masks or not. If it's not, it will be like saving a screenshot to the database so that you can use those data to retrain your model for better accuracy. So how I done my FYP one, uh, basically, I think first is of course, you have to understand the topic you have chosen. Um, you have to read, watch, and ask. Uh, ask is basically ask your supervisor, ask everyone, ask uh, online at a forum. You have to really understand the topic you have chosen. Second, uh, you have to read a lot of be it article or conference paper to find out what other people have already done before. Uh, their text stack or whatever so and what you could learn from them so that you can uh, prevent doing double job and then it's gathering data and resources that need for your system before start to code and before code you have to find out like different frameworks and way to do it uh, compare them like which one is more efficient and then understand them only you uh, choose it right and start coding and happy coding and stack overflow for the problem and in the build while well, you have to prepare well for the presentation both the slide and your mind like uh, what Dre had mentioned just now is really important that the objective you set you have to like relate it to whatever you did uh, in your system so that show that you're actually answering your objective that you have set in the in starting of your FYP. Yeah, and then in FYP two, this is a I just show is a error handling like a simple simple input validation from user. So, uh, yeah, it's basically check like uh the video whether it's uh available or not so that. Uh, when you're doing your system, you have to think of uh, how you're going to handle the errors and so on, right? So that your problem would uh, your system will run into problem that, like for example, for me, uh, simple is that the video if it's unavailable, then it can't even run, right? Yeah. So this is one of the uh, thing that we have to take care. Yeah, I think that's all for. All right, thank you, Jalian. That was really impressive. Now, next, move on to art from the artificial intelligence. Let's show our, our Lehang's FYP. I believe Lehang is not here in the meeting yet, but our technical team will show his FYP demonstration with the link that he has provided. Good morning, guys. I'm Lei Hang. As the MC might have introduced me, would like to take this uh, opportunity to thank Percom and its committees for organizing such an experience uh, sharing session for us uh, oldies to talk about our past journeys in FSKTM. Thank you for that. It is a bit unfortunate that 
due to certain circumstances, I am unable to attend the live. Hence, uh, I have this uh, recorded session being played right now. So let's get into it. My FYP title is on the water pollution classification using deep learning. While I was making this slide, uh, I found it to be rather a struggle to condense everything, all the information to five minutes. So I tried my best. Hopefully, it will give you some clarity on uh, my FYP. This is a high level view of my FYP project here. Two modules, one for model development on algae bloom and the other for the sedimentation. The whole project is actually broken into seven phases, or you could say seven steps. First, uh, it is on acquiring images with the set of requirements have to be fixed lah, for all the image acquisition being done. Image acquired would have to be pre-processed, which is the number two, such as standardizing the dimension, which would be subsequently used for the image annotation, number three, with open source tools such as the uh, Label Me by MIT. You can see on the bottom of number three there, there's a sample of how you can you know, annotate the image using the Label Me tool. It is actually in the model establishment where things get really interesting. Two models are being developed here uh, for two different purposes as well, by leveraging transfer learning. Law. One is for the water segmentation, uh, where you would have to teach the model to recognize what is a water body in an image. The other uh, is to classify if the water body found turns out to be polluted by either water pollution with a confidence score stick displayed, lock, which is the second one, the water pollution classification model. Then you you have the uh, models developer. Uh, you would have to you know uh, set a decent accuracy standard lah. So for example, you need the model to perform certain accuracy. If you manage to achieve the accuracy, which is part of your requirements of your project, you will need to save the parameter files, the trained models, uh, in the form of the parameters, and integrate it into the backend of your web application. I have used a uh, flask to do so as I, I was more familiar with uh, Python back then. And here you go, you have the web application with the integrated function where you could perform uh, water pollution classification by uploading images that you would like to you know, classify into the web application and it would churn out uh, a uh, uh, the interface law of this one, which is the result of the classification, the confidence score display over there. Yup, and uh, that's all for the uh, no short briefing, short go through, or just say a respite pitch of my FYP that I've done during the beginning of the year. Now. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, technical team, and also thank you, Lei Hang. Even though it's not live, his presentation still managed to be detailed and impressive, and it's also within the time reached. So now let's move on to Alfik from Data Science, and whenever you are ready. Okay, uh, is my screen clear? Yep, we can see the PowerPoint currently. Oh, okay, all right. Uh, so I'll start. Um, my project is the cryptocurrency value prediction. I'm Raja Alfik, and I was supervised by Dr. Noor Liana. Okay, so I'll briefly go through. I think the only important part from here I would highlight is the problem statement. So just like how in uh, throughout your course in data science, you will always be um, you will always be asked to prioritize the question before uh, doing any form of data science project. 
So my question was, um, based on previous works, which is my literature review, um, I would like to I would like to work on a cryptocurrency predictor that doesn't only focus on Bitcoin, like it focuses on other cryptos as well, because ma mainly I've seen are only focused on Bitcoin. And also another problem would be um, based on previous works, it, the data is not in real time and it's not flexible. So I'll just skip through most of this, the objective as well. Um, okay, so I'll Main, uh, mainly highlight this, the methodology. So um, in any, any data science process, there's data collection, pre-processing, uh, exploratory data analysis, model development, model evaluation, and testing. So I'll briefly run through what the data looks like. So this is the data. So based on a certain time frame, which I can uh, acquire. Uh, so for this, Example, it was from 2018, 1st of um, October. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll just speak on this then. Um, so there are different uh, prices. So there's the open, high, low, close, and adject, uh, ADJ close. So for the purpose of my project, I mainly focus on ADJ close because these are roughly the same values. Okay, so the pre-processing uh yeah the pre-processing thing just uh, shows that i only use the adj close okay so um another thing to highlight would be i think that's all from the methodology that i would like to highlight then i'll just quickly run through the demo okay so this is my app uh, web app that i deployed using streamlit similar to um, Jia Liang has showed. Okay, so from here, uh, the user can input um, four different kinds of input. One would be the cryptocurrency itself. So it would be Bitcoin, Ethereum, so on. So for this case, I'll use Ethereum. Um, so the number of days to predict, you can go one year or more or less, but for this, I'll use one year. Uh, training set, okay, training set means um, when we split the data, uh, how many percentage of that data would be the training set and which one would be the validating. So for this purpose, I'll be using 80% training set and all the available data. So um, this will be um, the data collected since the birth of Ethereum. Uh, I can also set a specific date range but for now, I'll use all available data and I'll predict. So this would take some time. So while it's predicting, okay, I'll just briefly go through this. This is the pricing of uh, Ethereum since um, this date. Okay, these are the recent dates. So, um, okay, so the graph here is the movement of the price of Ethereum since its conception up until this point, which is the current time. And this is the predicted value of the price, like how the movement of the price goes for the following year. So we can also change the candles, I mean, the, sorry, the, right, um, the time frame, yeah. So these are the movements um, based on six month intervals, so on and so forth. Um, but mostly you'll see it from a long term perspective, six months and one year. And yeah, this. Um, so I guess that is all for my presentation. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Alfie. That was an amazing and impressive FYP presentation. Finally, from multimedia, sorry, from multimedia department, Lian. Whenever you are ready. So yeah, hi guys. You can see. Can you guys see my screen? Yep. Oh, my we can see your screen. All right, good. Okay. So as you all know, my uh, application is a mobile app, and it's in AR based one. So it's a wall decker. So they are quite similar to Nippon Paint or 
uh, Deluxe or uh, World Decker app. So, uh, hold on a minute. Mm, yeah, that's that. Yeah, so the objective is that because I do realize there's like a lot of problems associating with, with all these like interior home walls. Uh, so, like interior designers have to work closely with contractors and they work closely with their clients to like solve their interior design problem when you want to buy item and so on. So, yeah, and also uh, they do face a lot of problems with the cost and also with the sizing. So, yeah, these are the following objectives that I wish I would like to help them with my AR app. Mm. So, my AR app is that it has the following functionalities where when we deploy it to my phone, you can actually access the device camera. Then we can actually have a feature to measure the scales of the house wall is it uh, not like length or height and also one dimension to another dimension and also can users have the option to choose the wall decker that they like from the list and whenever they drag and drop a certain furniture they can also like rotate or enlarge it according to their preferred size and uh, it allows the users to have an option to save the image where it's like you same same thing like photo editing uh, you already like do the makeup or whatever okay girls surely will know this uh, yeah <laughs> you photo edit your photos so same thing you can save it for future reference and so you can view a list of other wall decorative items or ideas from professional designers so yeah so this is a comparison that i uh found now from how the original system and my own proposed system so if without the AR app right usually uh, this is time duration and everything is very time consuming and it's expensive and it's like yeah you could, because you need to arrange an appointment with your clients and interior designers to like meet up and then go to your house and then blah 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 yeah so the process is pretty long and so yeah uh, not efficient I would say so th this is the advantages that I would say using the AR app mm. and of course I'm not the only AR web decker developer there's like others like I mentioned Deluxe, Nippon Paint, Graham Brown and Magic Plan so yeah when we always do comparisons we always like to take three or three or more other existing systems then you compare it by your own system because the reason is uh, just a few tips here is that when you do your FYP right if you're doing exactly more or less the same thing as the existing system it, the, it will kind of doesn't show your creativity much. So yeah, a few tips to my juniors here is that whenever you propose a system, do note down what are the features that already exist and what that is, hasn't existed yet. So yeah, try to be creative, try to challenge yourself on that. Mm. Um, Lian, I'm sorry to interrupt yes? you, but I think your slide is not changing. Uh, can I know which slide are you guys on? Uh, we're still at now um, the, the first slide. Oh, okay. Well, let me stop, stop sharing and share again. <laughs> Sorry about okay. that. It's okay, it's okay. But you can just continue. Mm. Yeah. Let me just share my entire screen. Can okay, you guys see? Okay, now we can see it. Okay, so yeah, here is the comparison table. Uh. So if this is what you guys uh propose and what is it that is already exists uh? and then the following one will be okay these are the tools that i have used in order to that to develop my app so my app is more like on android based so it's not really ios friendly lah. sorry for apple users <laughs> and the application engine that i'm using is unity case is i do see many advantages of yeah, YouTube videos that they use Unity to develop AR apps. So yeah, I kind of feel that it's a very good uh, engine in order to use for my app as well. And some images editing that I use maybe for buttons or for the camera buttons, the icons, I use Photoshop. And then for 3D models, okay, really I have two options. One is maybe I create from scratch using Blender and another one is I just import it from the uh, Unity has its own asset store so you can just search there and then import it from the Unity asset store and also for the packaging I'm using AR Core or AR Foundation and the plugins is native gallery 
So yeah, I'll show a video, just a brief video right here on how I did the app. So yeah, here's the main page. You guys can see the video, right? Yep, we can see it. Yeah, so that's the menu. And then that's like here. You can measure your wall. Actually, the wall is not really like pink. Lah. It can be transparent. Yeah, you can. Yeah. So as you can see here, I'm choosing the item or the 3D models, that like painting or what. Mm -hmm. I choose the bank and then I can like change the, yeah, I can, I can also change the wallpaper. Either I want speed or whatever color and then I can drag and rotate and resize it as much as I want. Oh, that's too big. Yeah, I'll skip some part of it because it's pretty long. Ah, uh, yeah, here. So here is the start measuring. Yeah, so here is where we can measure about one distance to another distance. And to be honest, I'm actually pretty surprised when I actually use the measuring tape to measure it with the one that my app measured. And it's actually pretty much accurate. I think the only, like, if it's not quite accurate, the accuracy is uh, just one or two cm off only. So I think. I'm really proud of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then get inspired is where I list down a list of ideas where you users can actually like when they click it, they're not sure what kind of idea they want to decorate. They can see other professional designs. Yeah. So yeah, that's basically it for my FYP. So yeah. Thank you and good luck to everyone. My fellow genius. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Lian. That is actually really impressive app you got there. And then I guess that wraps up for our demonstration session. Those are actually impressive FYPs our alumni has there. I'm sure most of the audience here are starting to get inspired with your outcome. So let me ask you guys some questions. So questions do, that will be asked during the moderating, we will start with, how did you guys think about the project theme generally? Maybe we can start with Ray. All right. So, um, so we, can I can I ask for clarification? So by that you mean like, uh, what do I think about my project in general? Is it or what exactly? How did you think about the project theme? Or basically, how did you think about the project? Why did you choose it? Like how it? What is the process of you choosing it? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, first of all, mental health has always been like something that I've thought about for quite some time. It has for personal reasons as well. Um, I have a friend who suffers from, I was diagnosed with NDD before. So naturally, right, I, I always have this thought in my head, like, how can I use my skills to sort of, um, you know, improve, uh, or, uh, uh, improve in terms of mental health. Lah. Okay, so that, that was the first motivation. But then it's not like when I started my FYP, like I, I'm like that certain, set in stone, like I want to do mental health and uh, nothing else. No lah. Okay, it's just that, ju it just so happens that when I was surveying for my FYP, uh, I saw one title that was related to mental health, which was proposed by my supervisor, uh, Dr. Siti. Yeah, so so that was the first motivation. The second one was, um, I knew from the get-go that um, I didn't want to do just a simple, like, uh, a group based FYP. La. Uh, I, I knew that because I'm in my final year, I knew that this would be the final chance for me to venture into other domains, right? Yeah, so that's why I took the risk of uh, trying out machine learning or uh, data science uh, as well as a bit on IoT uh, from my partner's side, even though it is like a 50 50 thing la, because I generally do not have any basics. Uh, quoting my supervisor, right, it's like I'm doing like a, like a machine learning slash data science project on top of like SE. So it was really difficult, especially for FYP1. Yeah, it took, it, could, it took me some time to get adjusted, uh, but eventually it was, I think it was worth it. La. Uh, I, I learned a lot from, from that. Yeah, so, so in a way, I was. Uh, yeah, I was quite grateful uh, 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 in terms of the, the uh, that I chose the title because the title, uh, FYI, uh, I I got it, I had to be interviewed by my supervisor first. Uh, she she interviews us before uh, uh, in order to determine who gets the title uh, because according to her, there was quite a number of students who approached her. So she has to conduct like an interview first to see which students like, um, you know, layak lah to get the title, which was quite funny to me because uh, no, no seniors didn't tell me like you get you're supposed to get interviewed for your project. That's kind of funny. Uh, so so yeah, uh, so that's that's generally how I think about the project theme lah. In terms of like tips, right? Uh, the takeaway you can get from this is don't be afraid to take risks. 
uh, like especially for SE students lah. Uh, of, of of course, we are only evaluated. Your of course, we are fo- your evaluation will be focused on your web development skills, right? But that doesn't restrict you from venturing into other domains, right? Like I said, this could be your final chance to do to explore those other majors like ML, IS, uh, cloud computing, and so on. So yeah, take this chance, right? Because once you start working, you will start specializing. So that will be a bit difficult, lah. Yeah. So I hope that answers the question. Yeah, it did definitely mm. answer the question. And I think that was really helpful because I'm sure some of the participants right now also didn't know that you have to get interviewed, right, by the supervisor. And I also think... Yeah, it depends on the supervisor. Really, <laughs> yeah, I, I also was surprised to yeah. hear that, actually. <laughs> All right, how about okay. uh, we hear from Safia? Uh, so, for mine... Actually, uh, for Ika Klete Yozakat, it is being proposed by my supervisor, which is Dr. Jihan from Information System Department. So, um, it didn't know exactly about me and my partner thinking about it. But um, actually, Dr. Jihan mentioned about uh, dealing with Zakat system, e-Zakat system herself, and how she came up with a thought of how to make it better. So, I think um, here... Uh, the, the, you can take this example to take a, lo- uh, take a look around you and think about, you know, um, if there is any apps or software you used in your daily life and then um, just um, pop up the questions, how can you make it better? And I think for me and my partner, this main thought can later be expanded into, you know, like certain features and enhanced solution for the project team itself. It's just, it's just um, you know, when you think, uh, when you take a look at your surrounding yourself, maybe you can find the project theme. At least what's closer to you will make it easier for you to see what um, the features and um, enhanced solution that you can add to your final year project. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I see. So it, basically, it is really important to explore more around your, around your surroundings, right? Yes. To get more idea. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> All right. How about let's hear from Jia Liang. Is Jia Liang here? What is your opinion on this or what is your uh how did you think about the project theme generally okay what is your for answer? me i choose individual type of fyp and basically i follow the faculty page <laughs> so when i only started to choose interested topic when the list is out on the umea system which is on week two then uh, i uh when the topic is out right so i when looking at the topic, uh, I didn't really know much as uh, some topic is not like straightforward that you saw the topic itself and you can figure out uh, what it meant, what I meant to do. So I even few lecturer asking more on the topic they offer. And normally the lecturer will say that this, this is uh, maybe I'm not sure whether there's year one and year two student here. Uh, I'm sharing with them our juniors, that uh, normally lecturer will set a date which invite everyone who is interested on the topic or he or she offers to join the briefing section. Then the lecturer will explain each of the topic that uh, they, they offer. And it is at that time I become more sure about what topic I should choose to do and so on. So that time uh, I approached few lecturer and joined their briefing section. In the end, I uh, find out that uh, real-time streaming is uh, one of the topics that uh, I didn't uh, come across before. So I choose it and um, uh, for me, it's uh, a bit different. Um, most of the time, the topic like given is what, what uh, you should do directly. However, for us, uh, we have to decide our application uh, myself. Like, uh, real time s- streaming and analysis is the topic given by uh, the supervisor, but then mass detection is the application that I choose. Like, my friend, he chose to do uh, analysis on Twitter polls, and some do stock, uh, like the stock prediction. And yeah, so that is the a surprise to me that uh, I have to choose my uh, own application and. That is the time, which is a COVID time, right? So I uh, think of uh, doing uh, face mask detection things. Yeah. Um, all right. So I think based on 
your answers, like every answers, like from Safiya Ray and also Jialyang. I believe that it is also important to be different, I guess, different from others, systems that has not been yet developed, right? Yeah. So I also think that is a great advice and also hearing from for the audience. All right, now let's move on to the next question. It's I believe it's a question that I think all of them, all the participants would ask the same questions. That is, what are the challenges faced by you guys? So I will, um, may I ask, is Lei Hung here? Yep, I am here. Yeah, so Lei Hung, can you, yeah, you are ideal. Can you answer okay. this? Like, what are the challenges that you have faced? Um, I believe that um, every project uh, they have their own very unique uh, challenges that they would face during the uh, design, the building, the testing, and different phases that you have uh, in the respective projects. So specifically for mine, because I'm coming from the uh, department of AI, so we AI is very dependent on uh, you know the data set you use to train the models. Uh, so the data itself is like the knowledge for your model. The model is like a children. You have to teach your model, okay, to recognize this. In my specific case, with this, I have to teach my model to recognize this is a water body. Uh, this is not a water body. So you need a very standard, a very clean data set of images that you can actually obtain uh, be it from online sources or you go out and obtain it yourself. You capture with your own phone or you want to capture with your drone. You have to fix it as part of your requirement. But during that time, it was uh, in the midst of a raging pandemic. So uh, I can't actually go out you know, high and find you know, places that I can take pictures for my, for my uh, uh, data set. So I have to go according to the government's regulation. Okay, uh, this is a period of time I can go out. Uh, I can go out and look for the data that I need for the training of the model. So this is one of the very, you uh, know, uh, problem that are faced by the uh, AI students uh, during the pandemic. If you can't find any existing data set online, uh, so. Uh, I think there are a few more uh, challenges, but I think I would like to focus more on the data set itself uh, because that is the very prerequisite to a decent uh, accuracy model. Uh, your model couldn't, uh, can't actually be too accurate. If it's too accurate, it means that you're overfitting it. So data is very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, I agree with that. Thank you, Ehang. Um, can we also hear from Isrin about your challenges? Doing your FYP. Okay, so first of all, I would like to say that um, for data science project, uh, it's different from the conventional FYP in the sense that uh, it was only done in one sem, whereas uh, conventional FYP takes two sems. So my main challenge was time constraint because um, as you all know, final year, you would have a lot of heavy subjects on top of the one sem of trying to fit in the literature review, finding the topic, so on. Um, so managing your time well is really um, beneficial in that sense. And also um, another thing I would like to highlight is your topic. Um, my topic was based uh, mainly on my interests. Um, also for a data science project, uh, you didn't, there was no list provided. You can freely uh, choose whichever topic. So at the time, <laughs> at the time I was um, very interested in investments, namely cryptocurrency. So I based it off of that. And that really also helped alleviate the challenge of um, procrastination because um, is something that I'm interested in, so, um, so I was able to focus on it even, uh, even though there was a busy schedule ahead. So that is all from me. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Alfie. Uh, and also, I really agree with you when you said that it is important for us to get something interesting for our FYP because 
I myself is a procrastinator, but when it comes to something interesting, that procrastinating wouldn't appear to me because if something that interests you, then you surely would be productive when you are applying it, right? Yeah. Okay, how about we hear from Lian about her challenges? Mm, okay, yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, I would say that as a multimedia student, usually I hear a lot of complaints from my peers that we are not good in coding. So this one is back and it's like a very big challenge for us multimedia students. So yeah, sometimes it's like coding can be a killer, but also can be something that can make a lot of wonders. So do try to practice a lot. And then when I'm doing my FYP, I really wanted to do something that is well, since AR is something kind of new to me, that's why I kind of feel like, okay, let me just try out this challenge. Then as I progress along the way, I actually didn't know that the frameworks that I need to integrate, the plugins and etc. is like, it's got to do with my hardware as well. So my phone wasn't actually quite compatible with the framework. And also a lot of, and if I were thinking like, okay, let me try to list down, if I were to switch frameworks, what are the disadvantages? And then I did see a lot of other AR libraries that can be used, but they are not as good as the AI library that I wanted to use. And also because a lot of uh, online YouTube videos, they are also using the, that particular AI library that is more advanced. So yeah, that library itself is very powerful. So yeah, so after like weighing the pros and cons, I kind of feel like, yeah, maybe it's just time to buy a new phone. Nah. Yeah, so if anyone were to ask me, oh, how much is, how much does my FYP cost? Yeah, yeah it costs almost 2000 over. Like, <laughs> the cost of a phone is equivalent to my cost of my FYP. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so just one tip and advice is that if any of your FYP is related to any like hardware device or plugin or whatever, right, just make sure that you can afford to buy that particular hardware or even if you can't afford maybe you can get help from lecturers or friends who have that device then they can help you out don't like last minute only then you finally notice and oh tomorrow tomorrow viva but today only you notice them uh <laughs> yeah procrastinators have to time manage time management skills yeah yeah that's all yeah funny. that's thank true. you all right thank you lian um, when you said about the multimedia where people mindset said that students from multimedia don't know coding. Yeah, I believe some of my friends also complained about how multimedia had required coding. But as uh, you can make Lian as an inspiration, she did not take afraid to take risks. And you, usually what people would say that no pain, then you would know you would have no gain. Right. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to the next question. What was your thought process in order to finally come up with your FYP idea? Basically, what is the final, um, final something that hit you that made you sure that this is the FYP idea that you wanted to do? Um, maybe we can start with Ray. Is it okay? Yeah, sure. Um, all right. So here's a fun fact, lah. Um. I, my partner and I were quite excited like, when we were searching for our FYP, so much so that we actually emailed lecturers like weeks in advance. Uh, even though some lecturers, they haven't even prepared their titles yet. Like, usually right before the semester start, then they will start preparing. But we got tips from seniors. They say, you know, if you email them, they will give a good impression. Like, and that's exactly how I got my current title. Like. So my so my uh, daughter city was called so impressed like oh this these two peers are so excited <laughs> like they emailed me like before the semester even began uh so so that's another tips lah like i, I think for the current third year uh, too late really lah but for the juniors right uh it's okay you can approach lecturers lah uh, uh in advance uh but just keep in mind like, not all of them will have their titles ready all right so i i chose the title i mean i sort of answered in the first question already lah uh again it was related to mental health and then it also involves other domains as well but what ultimately made me choose the title was when my supervisor told me this was new. Although at the time it was just her instinct. Uh, she did her own preliminary literature review, right? When she came up with the title. Uh, but then ultimately it's up to us during FYP1 later on to, to, to actually ascertain uh, whether the, the, the project we're doing is actually, is actually really like novel or not. So that that is really interesting to me because um, imagine having the chance to do something new, right? Uh, so it's a really great research opportunity. Uh, so I discussed with my partner and and we both decided that this title will be will be good for us lah. Uh, so that that was really like 
my 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 thought process. But again, there's a lot of risk into it. First of all, because it's something new, right? There's not much reference to begin with. That is that is one thing that I, I in hindsight, I, I think I should have thought about it earlier <laughs> because we were sort of excited that, oh, this is something new, right? But then uh, then we were doing literature review, right? In the individually, right, like Twitter sentiment analysis and like smartwatch, nothing new, right? We have, it's already there, like you can Google it, so much references. But because no one has tried to combine both of them, so we're like on our own, lah. So which is why we had to rely on a lot of stakeholders. A fun fact, my project has five stakeholders. <laughs> so that was one of the biggest challenges, lah. Like you have to, every each of them have their own opinions. So how do you like, uh, like manage them, lah? Uh, but yeah, so to, to basically like TLDR to answer the question, lah. Uh, the main attraction to me as to why I decided on my current title instead of others was because uh, the attraction in the fact that it involves other domains, gave me an opportunity to diversify my skills. And of course, the fact that the research we're doing is new. Uh, so that's why we joined the competitions like, like that I, met, I showed you like, in, in earlier on. Uh, so uh, which, it, it was fun. Uh, so like I said, multiple times, like what the rest of the speakers have mentioned as well, uh, take risk. Lah, okay, if you if you have the research that is new, uh, by all means do. But but if you if, even if your title is not new, right? Like I think what Le I think Leanne was the one who mentioned this. Even if your project is it already exists. It doesn't mean it's a bad thing, ah. Uh. Like you, that 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 is part of the challenge, uh. That's why you have to, you have to figure out what are additional modules, additional features that you need to come up with in order to improve it. Okay. So I don't want you guys to, by the time this event ends, uh, you 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 guys have this mindset like, oh, the FYP is only good if it's new. No, ah, uh, that's not the case, ah. Uh. Okay. Ah, uh, so even if it's existing pro, it already exists. It still, uh, it's it still has a lot of potential, uh. Okay. Yeah. So I hope that answers the question. Yeah. Thank you, Ray. Oh, it's nice to see you being excited, and I'm sure that the audience are also excited to come up with their FYP titles and so on. All right, thank you. And um, how about we pass on to Lei Hang to answer the question? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Uh, can you repeat the question again? <laughs> okay, like sure, father? sure. The question is basically asking how, what is the out, um, what made, what was the final decision uh, that made you come up uh, to finally get that title, like confirm that that is the title that you want? All right, so basically the top process like you're asking, am I right? Okay, the top process is I, I have always been uh, focused on the uh, uh, impact. Uh, so before I do something, I would evaluate the impact of that particular action. Uh, would it be uh, good for certain aspect of the uh, uh, perspective? Like, am I, is the background noise too, too bad here? It's okay, we can still hear you. Oh, all right, that's great. So I would see impact into two different categories. One is the impact towards the external side and impact towards the internal side. So, uh, you have to define your own uh, ultimate goals that you want to achieve for that particular impact. So, for my personal impact, it's more towards the learning side. And for the external impact, it would be what would be the uh, values that I can add on with this particular FYP being implemented. And in my case, it would be water pollution. Because you know, it like... I think we are living around slang, or right? if you go around the rivers, you see all the wonderful, you know, surprising colors of the river. You know, you, you can go rainbow color of the rivers as well, right? So we see a problem over there. So how can we use our knowledge in order to create an impact? Uh, you see the UM uh, every day, not every day, uh, sometimes don't have water. You know, some people living around don't have water, this and that. So you see a problem. So you have to leverage on your knowledge in order to solve the problem. So I found the problem over there. So there's a potential you know, solution that I can use you know, by leveraging AI to solve that problem. For this stage of time, it would be a pre, uh, precautionary measure. Okay, if I manage to detect uh, a very first signs of a water pollution, then I can alert the authorities and the authorities can go down and investigate before it turns worse and causing all those ice like you know, to have no water release to the people out there and you're forced to go without any shower for days. Uh, yep, that, that will be the top process of my impact days. 
Oh, I see. So I guess you are really alert with your surroundings to make sure that you are sure that this is the topic that you want. So I guess everyone can take some tips on that. And how about we uh, move on to Safiya to answer this question also? Yeah, sure. Um, so the thought process, huh? Um, actually, as mentioned, uh, we didn't come up with the idea itself, but I can talk a bit about how I managed to revolve around the basic idea of it and revamped it. You know, um, at first, uh, my supervisor presented the basic idea of Izaka system, which um, it only offers the calculator for zakat types. And as mentioned also, uh, zakat payers have to look at a lot of zakat types, including zakat on business, zakat on income, you know, gold, savings, really is a lot. So what me and partner do is uh, we did a literature review, not only on e-zakat system in Malaysia. So uh, compared to Ray, we actually have a lot of um, resources to look into. So. Um, we have um, in Malaysia, we have as um, one of my stakeholders is Lembaga Zakat Selangor. Uh, and the other one is Majlis uh, Zakat Tengganu. Really, we have a lot. Every uh, negeri, every state in Malaysia, we have, uh, they have their own uh, Lembaga Zakat. So um, we didn't limit ourselves only in, in Malaysia. So what we did was we look into UK Zakat system. Yes, you heard it right, uh, United Kingdom, and uh, they call it NZF, National Zakat System, if I'm not mistaken. So um, this, uh, since Islam is really white, you know, so we took the opportunity to, you know, explore more to see which features are offered by each of the website and Zakat system. So um, from there, um, it is really crucial to explore all the resources that you can get so that you can obtain more and the most out of uh, for your FYP. Yes, I think, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> yeah, you. it definitely did. Thank you, Safiya. All right, um, let's move on to our last question for our moderating session. Were you guys satisfied overall with your FYP? Let's start with, um, how about Alfie? Can you answer, are you satisfied or not? Um, since the topic um, that I've chosen was uh, really of interest for me. I am overall really satisfied with my project. Okay, thank you. Um, how about Zalia? Um, to me, I'm satisfied with the process, um, creating, implementing and solving the problem. However, I think my system is still not up to perfect at like this. Like, uh, something that can be improved, but yeah, it's due to time constraint that uh, the database part is not really implemented well, and there will be a uh, wrong detection. However, uh, means like it can be further improved by the accuracy. And one of the thing that I would like to share is uh. Personally, uh, I'm more keen on cybersecurity stuff, and uh, I have read about Fallus malware, which means traditional antivirus risk scan based on signature of far H is not effective anymore, since that there is no far it reside at our memory or, or uh, buffer. So instead, uh, detecting behavior of this kind of antivirus should be used to in tackling this malware. But I didn't have the confidence to finish it as my FYP on time as it's hard when it comes to implementation. I only come across this idea when uh, after choosing topic. So I at the end I after all I it's COVID time, so I choose to do face mask detection over uh, real time stream data and process video file timely is like uh, more challenging, so I decided to give it a try. But uh, my advice to uh, you guys who is currently year one or year two that uh, it's important to build up your career profile as soon as possible. So it's good if you are able to do something related to your career path, your FYP. So you could start thinking of a direction right now and go on research and gathering data set for if for training if available, like uh. They hang just say that uh have to fit fit the data to the baby, <laughs> like you treat as a baby to learn. So yeah, uh you if involving with uh 
training model. So a fighting right data set and dealing with setting parameters when training model is uh, really important. So it takes time so to uh, go on for research and call something out first during your you guys send break. That like like right before your FYP, you can try to try out some ideas. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Jala. Thank you. I'm sure that is really helpful for uh, the participant. And finally, let's ask Lian. Are you satisfied overall with yours? Mm, okay, I think I have quite a similar opinion with Jia Liang because I, I, mean, I don't know if he is a perfectionist, but I am a perfectionist. So yeah, I do like have, I'm satisfied with some parts, but I'm definitely feeling that there are some parts which can be improved. That's why I feel like I haven't like fully achieved it yet. It wasn't like a fully perfect app. It wasn't like ready to be, uh, you know, in the market where users can deploy it from Google Play Store or whatever, then can fully see the features. So like, yeah, I, I am quite ambitious, but not all ideas can be integrated. So sometimes when we think about ideas, we have to be realistic and what are the ideas that you can really be manage to implement in that in that short time frame and what is it that is worth forfeiting what is worth investing and things like that so yeah it's like maybe i will give myself like maybe three or four out of five <laughs> stars for my overall satisfaction because i feel that definitely if you give me a chance i would like to like up my game mm. <laughs> thank you yeah all right thank you lian and that is up all for our moderating session. Thank you to all speakers with your insightful sharings and thoughts. I'm sure now the audience are eager to ask more questions that I didn't ask. So I shall open the Q&A session for the participants. You guys can scan the QR code and enter the code shown in my backdrop or also in the screen here. Oh, I see we have multiple questions already, so I hope every speaker are already and to everyone you guys are allowed to ask a question to a particular speaker just mention their names in your question and don't worry if you're shy because the every question will remain anonymous so let's start first let's see the first top questions that has three likes I see so is it hard to juggle specialization subjects university elective courses and researching for your FYP so any speakers, you are allowed to unmute your mic. Yeah, Ray? Oh, okay. I was already unmute. <laughs> it was not because, <laughs> okay, never mind. Okay. Definitely. Um, in fact, I think this is something a lot of people didn't know uh, beforehand. A lot of people think that, oh, your final year is difficult because of your FYP. But the hidden devil, I tell you, is actually those subjects. because Especially for FYP 1. Uh, because, like, you know... Uh, F yeah, especially for FYP one uh, because I think in your sixth semester is when you will take more subjects compared to your final semester if you are arranging your your course schedule properly lah. Uh, so yeah, it is quite difficult. Sometimes you really have to choose lah whether or not which one you want to prioritize. Uh, it, it, for me right, um, yeah, it, it, do sometimes those selective subjects really challenge you and you really need to know how to manage your time. There are instances in the past where seniors they flunk. Uh, their subjects lah, because they prioritize on their FYP. Uh, so you got to ask yourself lah, like which one is worth it. To me, for, for FYP 1, it's still okay because it's only three credits. But for FYP 2, since it's five credits, right? Uh, so yeah, that one you need to, to put a lot of attention. Lah. And I think in, in your final semester, lectures are also quite considerate. Lah. Uh, they will tell you that uh, uh, they know, for example, in week 9, something like that, you have to submit your monitoring. Uh, so they can, you can negotiate with them lah, in order to uh, you know, postpone your presentation date and so on, or when is your examination date. Uh, so it is is difficult, but you don't just like acknowledge it's difficult and that's it. Like, you try to, you know, uh, negotiate with lecturers, you know, uh, prepare beforehand. Like if you know that uh, in the middle of semester, there's going to be like a bunch of exams, right? So you need to do your literature review in advance or something like that. Okay. Uh, so it is going to be difficult. A lot of people ask me like, is it difficult, right? I always tell them, of course it's difficult, right? It's your final year project. It's the culmination of your like three and a half years journey. If I were you guys, if it's too easy, uh, I would be very suspicious, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, uh, right? So it's supposed to be difficult anyway. Uh, so, but don't worry, like all of you, all of us will prevail eventually, right? Because you survived like three years already. So think of that one only left that one final leg, right? 
Uh, so don't worry about it. Lah. It's difficult, but you guys will be able to juggle just fine. A lot of seniors have already done it, so why can't you, right? Yeah, so hope that answers that question. <laughs> All right. I suppose it did answer most of the questions. I hope everyone is satisfied with Ray's answer. Does anyone uh, other than Ray want to answer this question too? Maybe give some advice? If no, then I guess we can move on to other questions because we do have a lot of questions from the participants. All right, so let's move on to the next question. Could anyone elaborate more? We have to pick titles for our FYP from lecturers, is it? Yeah, I believe some of them are really, are still confused in this. So does anyone oh. uh, from the speaker want to uh, yeah, answer? Me, me. All right, yeah, yeah. is it? All right, so yeah. uh, I'll explain uh, as I prepare the slides. Uh, so choosing your supervisor is basically, uh, first uh, you can visit the academic project website at ilmiafsktm.um.edu.my. And, but however, this one, uh, I'm not sure whether it's up uh, any time. Sometimes it's down, all right? So listing <laughs> of the topic normally will be given by week two. So you can identify and approach, discuss with your potential supervisor. However, uh, answering to that question, right, uh, it's, it's, it's either when the list is being released, you'll find what you are interested in and go on contact the lecturer via email or any other relevant channel. Or you have to decide to propose a title towards your favorite lecturer. Like not favorite, it's like your the lecturer who his or her domain is in that particular direction of what, what you want to do. And you can ask to his or her flavor politely, okay, to be your supervisor. And then it's up to the lecturer to accept, decline, or advise on your proposed title. Like uh is it too narrow or like uh, maybe some lecturer will give you advice that, oh, I think uh, I have come up with some stakeholder from outside of the uh, external uh, that might have some like similar domains things to, yeah, to, 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 to your proposed topic, then yeah, you can choose that topic. So not necessarily uh, choose the topic that given by supervisor. You can propose your own title, but it's subject to availability that uh, the supervisor want to accept your topic, uh, your, your title, all right? If it is like me, as I mentioned, uh, um, I myself, if after the list is being released on, I think it's week two, then only I choose, yeah. But if like I see the, from the slido, now they got people asking, it's the uh, same question about, uh, Regarding email link doctor, what is the subject and when is the time? Uh, like last time when during the sharing, one of the lecturer has mentioned that it is okay that like before one month or one and a half or two months from your, uh, normally that this is on some fact about this um, FRP one and two is to talk taken on your final year, same six and same seven, if you didn't go to exchange, means it's your semester two, year three. And then before this semester, uh, you could already like, like during the same break, one month or earlier, you could already um, go on and email the uh, supervisor, email the lecturer that you wish to discuss more about like your own proposed title, if you would like to do so. And then uh, some tip is the right timing of proposal. I have already uh, covered that. Uh, something is about, uh, it depends. Uh, I'm, I'm also surprised when Ray shared that it is by interview. Some lecturers uh, use first come first serve basic. So yeah, grab, <laughs> grab the chance. Uh, the earlier, the earlier you get. It's depend on lecturer. Some lecturer like real say is interview. Yeah, then is yeah. Right. So I get hope it answer your question. Yeah, okay. for me it did definitely answered my question. I was also confused about this. So thank you, Jia Liang, for your slide and 
for the, uh, for the participants, don't worry. This uh, this meeting is recorded. So if you want to refer to Jialian's uh, slide, you can also you can always refer to this recording later in our team. All right. Um, can we? Uh, is the slideo still sharing? Because I can see it in the screen. All right. So let's move on to the next question. All right. This question is for Ray. Could you elaborate more on emailing the lecture? Oh, lectures early before the semester started. I believe uh, Liang already explained about yeah, this, right? It's already answered. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we can move on with that. And then um, I guess we can skip the similar questions. All right. So now this is for Alfik, I guess, Raja, right? So what is the accuracy of the prediction for your model? And did you invest based on your model predictions? Lastly, can you predict the FTM coin? Thank you. Okay, uh, to answer the first part, uh, wait, can I? Uh, okay, so the accuracy, um, it's quite vague, like you can't really put ac um, uh, what uh, uh, accuracy testing. So what I did was I actually like, um, I based the accuracy like um, comparing it to the movement of other coins. So like, uh, the the movement of Ethereum, uh, how similar it is to uh, Bitcoin, for example. Then the score was about 0 0.66, which just means that it's 66% uh, similar to Bitcoin, for example. And for FTM coin, hold on. Uh. Should I share my screen? Sorry, that's another question. Do you invest based on your model predictions? Uh, as of now, I have uh, no money as a student, so I will once I do work, yeah, a full time job because intern, uh, the the income is not that high. I'll share my screen. So for FTM coin. I see you're interested in Phantom. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the prediction. And roughly November later, it will peak and it should buy at around July 10, July 9 ish. But yeah, uh, take this with a grain of salt and do your own research before buying cryptocurrency. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you, Alfie. Okay, let's move on to the next question. All right, uh, another one for Alfie. So what are the methods you use to predict the crypto prices after retrieving historical price data? Okay, uh, so the method that I use uh, for modeling was the FP profit. So what uh, what is FP profit? It's actually a a Python module, which um, it's a Python module that's open source forecasting modeling based uh, built by Facebook. So that is the main uh, that is the only modeling technique I use actually. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you can further research on that later. All right, thank you, Avi. So let's. Next question is for Lei Hang. Is your FYP limited to only algae bloom or water pollution in general? Okay, thank you. So, um, basically, uh, my FYP is only uh, dedicated for two kinds of pollution. One is algae bloom and the other one is sedimentation. Before you do something, you would have to know what is the justification behind it. Okay, for mine, water pollution and sedimentation is the most common type of water pollution you see in Malaysia. So everywhere you go, usually either see the lake is the water body is too green or the water body is too brown. That's like that. So two only. So you need the justification for two. But in my pipeline, there's two different models. One is for water body segmentation and the other one is for the classification of water pollution. 
So the water segmentation is actually very versatile. We can use it to attract any water body. So that later, if you want to integrate different kinds of uh, water pollution prediction, you can actually tune it in the second model, which is the water pollution classification. After it detects the uh, water and segmented it out for the uh, next level of classification. So in short, only sedimentation and algae bloom at the moment. All right, thank you, Lei Hang. I hope the person who asked the question got the answer. And next is for Safia. May I know what type of methodology you choose for data gathering method? And can you explain more how you collect the data? Okay, thanks for the questions. Uh, data gathering method. Uh, I guess it's, uh, I can mention about the literature review. So uh, me and my partner did uh, a lot of interviews and we also have um, like a list of questions like a survey to ask the stakeholder. Um, so my stakeholder was uh, Lembaga Zakat Selangor and also LHDN, uh, Lembaga Sendalam Negeri. And we also have another one actually, but uh, it was very subtle. We didn't contact them very much, which is Majlis Agama Wilayah Persekutuan, which they handle Zakat for KL also. And so um, we divided the interviews to three, which is the first one is uh, for the stakeholders only, which is to get the higher view of user experience. And then the second one is for the admin or consultant of Zakat, which uh, we contacted in the Lembaga Zakat Selangor itself. Uh, you know, as uh, they are the one behind the system and uh, they also use the system to interact with the user or Zakat payers. And the last one is uh, Zakat payers themselves. Uh, this is where we interviewed and do some, you know, like simple surveys uh, to the Zakat payers, um, which of course consisting of my mom <laughs> and also some other Zakat payers. So back to the data collection, um, mainly the interview, it is important to, um, for me, it is important to identify the core of your project module. So that uh, from here you can search for the related, you know, research papers and also websites or software. Because uh, even for my project, um, some of you might think that oh, uh, do Zakat actually have research papers on the Zakat system? Yes, we do. So uh, you know, just um, explore more and then uh, search for some research papers and do some interviews, contact some people. You know, you can also use, you know, LinkedIn or uh, some of their website contact us you just do your chances yeah i hope that answers your question yeah thank you uh safia all right next question okay so this is general any any speakers can answer so how you guys choose the topic field to work with and are there any tips does anyone want to answer this question maybe those who weren't uh called to answer yet maybe lian or anyone Mm, yeah, I think I I can help to answer. Though I don't we're not really sure whether these tips can be that useful, but I just try to find a topic which maybe you would like to learn. Which for me at the time it was A R I N because I'm like it's new for me, then I'm not sure what is it. Uh, so you can choose it, and then the others is like. Yeah, you can like get tips from some people like your seniors and see how they choose their title, then you try to figure out. Mm -hmm. so just choose something that you, you feel have fun with, that you're interested to learn in. I think should, or maybe a topic which you want to specialize in, in your career. That would be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Lian. I also agree since we also discussed this during our moderating session. Yeah, it's really important for you guys to uh, grab um, topics that you find interesting so you don't procrastinate much on that. All right, so next question. So this is also general, anyone can answer. So in terms of the topics, how do you come up with the ideas or are they chosen for you? If it's the former, how early or when should we come up with the idea? Does anyone want to answer? I believe this is already like explained before, so maybe a short answer will do. I mean, I can answer like just very quickly since we're already like five minutes over time. Um, 
I actually did come up with my own ideas. Um, I, I didn't go blindly. Like, I, I know that for the fact that you can also propose your own titles just for your information. So I did prepare my own proposals. Lah. Uh, but here's the thing that uh, when you propose your proposal, at least for SE, huh, um, when you propose your own proposals to your chosen supervisor, right? sometimes they will ask, the, your, your, your chosen supervisor might ask you to submit your project to the your department coordinator first for their approval. Only if they approve, then the supervisor will take your project. So what happened was when I submitted my titles uh, to my, my one of my uh, a few supervisors, some of them asked me to to check with Dr. Hyrule. Lah. He was the coordinator at the time, uh, but he rejected the my, our titles on the basis. And this is very common. I think some of you will experience this later, especially when you're doing a project with a partner. Uh, the mostly, mostly lectures will like, comment that your title is not complex enough because if you have an extra manpower, right, so your project needs to be like, wow, lah, you get what I mean or not? Like people, lecture panels would usually comment like, like this project right, so simple, like one person can do. So why you have, like you have two people in your team, like uh, even more like if like three people, right, I think some projects like are in groups. Uh, so that, that is the burden lah, that you need to prove. And it, it's, it's even it's even worse during FIP1, lah, especially during Viva. So of course, for sure panels will say like your project is not complex enough. Uh, but you can, please, by all means, you can come with your ideas and as early as possible, especially if you're in first and second years, uh, you need to start think about what is your passion, right? You need to think, if you're if you're into blockchain, then start thinking about that, start learning about that. Don't, don't, by the time you done have the same six, but you want to think about what you want to do, okay? That is very, very risky. There's a chance, high chance that you will end up getting a title that you just, you know, it's the only title that's left. Uh, so we don't want that, right? Uh, we want to do some, this is one year worth of work. You don't want to just take whatever title that's left, right? You want to invest, that you're going to invest a lot of time in there. Uh, so start thinking about it as soon as possible. Uh, so even in your first or second year, you can start thinking about the idea, like your passion. What is it that you want to do, right? So I hope that answers the question. Lah. All right, thank you, Ray. How about we move on to the next question? Okay, so what are the pros and cons when collaborating with companies for our FYP project? Does anyone want to answer this? Maybe Jalia? Um, since I'm not actually collaborating with company, but I have a few thoughts that the pros might be what Ray says about complexity. Mostly if the company is reliable, then uh, you are actually solving real world problems. So complexity maybe will be able to impress the panel. So that is the pro. And since that uh, is from company, then yeah, sometimes that your project, what you did will be like having a real impact and it will get you easier landing at the jobs, especially that the project you did is whatever is exactly the thing that you want to be like 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 uh for for myself if i'm doing cyber security stuff so at least my fyp has the uh experience so that uh yeah i think it's, it's easier when you want to landing on a job since you already have that experience with a uh, existing company cons would be Cons would be maybe uh you will have to like when you have too many stakeholder like um I'm speaking as of my friend's experience um <laughs> you might be having a lot of ideas like the boss say uh I want to be like that then another boss say I want to be there will be like some confused day that you have to choose uh, how you gonna to do it did it and also there's a thing. Uh, I should say is uh, monitoring and viva section is fixed. Monitoring section is like um, uh, the panel is going to check on your progress, uh, like how you did. It's not included. It it got no marks. Uh, it's actually got no marks. Mm. At least for our section, I'm not sure in the future whether monitoring section will be ha having marks on it. For our session, uh, it got no marks, but it's actually act as a checking on you. How is your progress? And the panel able to give you some advice, and you're gonna to uh, address to the advice or question that being uh 
asked by the panel in the Viva section, mostly in the week 15 or week 16, I'm not sure. Sometimes it's, it's changing based on semester, all right? And the thing is, when you're collaborating with company for doing things right, uh, the company itself is very busy. So sometimes the, the one from the company is not able to get to you right on time. So you have to like doing two version. Uh. One version is to uh, like address to the to your objective for the school, for the faculty, for the panel to getting your marks. You have to follow all the weightage and so on. Like what is the rubric, right? Rubric so that you get the marks. However, uh, maybe the company will drag some, not all company I am saying, maybe some company will be dragging and their request is a bit off the topic. So you still have to do it. Yeah, you still have to do it, but uh, maybe like after Viva section, you still continue doing, doing it, but you have to do something for your Viva. But you, you have to, to have two versions, that kind of thing. And the other pros is, Normally, collaborating with company, right? You get paid. If you do individual, I, I'm doing individual, so I'm not getting paid. If you're collaborating with company, maybe it's like giving you some good company. It, it can give up to you 2,000, 3,000 month for you to doing their, their project. Basically, it's what they want to research. They throw it to you and you research. Yeah, but the thing is when, if it's a, Research thing, which means it's not uh, on production, that need you to be on production real real quick. So that, yeah, they, they will be dragging. Uh. It's like, it's not the main focus of the company, right? And your that supervisor from that company is over busy with doing real thing, uh, rushing for deadline for the company, right? So yeah, some sometimes they are not able to get to you on time and uh, you have to prepare the version for your viva and monitoring. Yeah, I think this is the con and pros. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jia Liang. That was so detailed and I'm sure everyone has gained a lot of knowledge from that. All right. Since we are actually running out of schedule, so I will, this, this will be the last question for our event today. So thank you to all speakers for the detailed answer and inspiring tips. I'm sure everyone in this meeting has gained a lot of knowledge and is motivated to do great for their future projects. All right, before we wrap up, we would like to have a group photo session. Can everyone turn on your camera and give us a big smile? Or firstly, maybe the technical team can stop sharing the Slido. All right, everyone can turn on your camera and don't be shy. All right, um, I'm taking a photo. Just wait for a bit. Three, two, one. Right, one more. Three, two, one. Right, done. Thank you. All right, thank you, Faris from the technical team. So before we end the session, I would like to remind everyone there is a feedback form that we have prepared and it will be pasted in the chat box. So it would be lovely if you guys could fill in the feedback form as it will be also your attendance for our event today. So great. Uh, lastly, I would say thank you to all speakers. You guys have get, uh, gave motivations and in, inspiring words to us and I'm sure everyone was inspired to be just like one of you guys and I'm sure you guys have gave a big impact to them. So. Great, thank you everyone. We really appreciate you being here. Again, thank you all for joining us today and we will see you next time. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> all right, bye. Thank you. All the best for FYP. Yeah. Bye, thank you. Bye, everyone. thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>